If you go to stores, grocery stores in our country, you see huge shelves uh, loaded with these so-called fruit drinks that are really 90, 95% sugar water, maybe with a little touch of uh, actual fruit juice in there. And uh, these have the same amount of sugar mostly as a Coke would have. Something like an orange juice or a strawberry juice or whatever they might put, uh, whatever they put on the front. Is that what you're saying? Walter? Right. Yes. And it's usually a, a little, a uh, few tablespoons of orange juice and a, and a cup full of sugar that uh, would be in those products. And refined starch and sugar in so many different forms. But one of the things that's changing is not just the food uh, but also aggressive advertising and subtle advertising. The food industry does massive amounts of research on how to penetrate our vulnerabilities. And, you know, Cokes are advertised as something that uh, there's friends all around, that athletes drink this, uh, and nothing could be farther from the truth. And this is undermining the health. They're basically using uh, advanced uh, psychological methods to basically ex exploit our vulnerabilities. And especially worrisome is that a lot of this is directed at children who are vulnerable, who can't be expected to make informed decisions about the long-term consequences of what they're drinking or, or eating. So you've got this imbalance. In your opinion, like the industrialization of the food and then the advertising in, against these is an important part of the, the story of what you're seeing in your data? Exactly. That this... Uh, production, vast production of uh, unhealthy foods, uh, which are extremely cheap to produce because sugar and starch are very, very cheap. And so putting those together in thousands of different combinations of colorings, flavorings, marketing is a huge problem. I think a lot of people listening to this will be like really clear about sugar and sugar in drinks because that's sort of quite easy to understand because it looks like something you, you know, we all understand at home how you can take a spoonful of sugar and you get terrified by how many spoonfuls of sugar they put in. But you've talked about unhealthy carbs and starch. Could you unpack that a little bit? What are the sorts of foods that people might sort of see on their grocery shelves um, that you're saying actually these are really unhealthy? and the things it's interesting that are at the top of your list as you're you're saying this is how I'm what I'm seeing right the sugar sweetened beverages are clearly the, the single if you have to look at one problem that's the single most important in part because many people have three or more servings per day but uh, we've just published a paper a couple of weeks ago looking at uh, different forms of carbohydrate and weight change and uh, what we see is that, yes, sugar is a real problem, but actually a bigger problem is the amount of refined starch that we consume. And this would be uh, basically uh, white bread, uh, think other things made with white uh, flour, uh, white rice, uh, potatoes, uh, small amounts are okay, but that's a form of carbohydrate that's very rapidly turned into blood sugar. And I think that's really interesting because I think I was brought up, uh, and I think a lot of people listening to this will have the same thing that like, well, rice is really healthy. You know, white rice is this really healthy food. And I was also, I think about my grandmother, she'd be absolutely shocked at the idea that you shouldn't eat a limitless number of potatoes and that would be good for, you know, growing up in, uh, you know, she grew up in Scotland. That's like part of, you know, that, that's healthy. Obviously the sugar drinks, they'd understand. So can you help people who are listening to this to understand, I guess, why you're as worried about these sort of what you call refined starches, these things from white flour and white rice and, and, and potatoes, as you were about, you know, Coca-Cola, where everybody, like, no one thinks that giving Coca-Cola to their children is a good idea. But I think lots of people will be thinking, oh, well, if I get them to eat rice, I'm, I'm doing great. Yes. And in fact, it, again, when we started our work back in 1980, the American Heart Association and organ, health promoting organizations were pushing people to consume more white rice and, and pasta and uh, things like that because uh, they didn't contain much fat. Uh, but basically in the processing of, say, a, a rice or wheat, uh, the first step, the refining, removes the bran from the outside. That's where most of the fiber is. That's where most of the minerals are. That's where most of the vitamins are. And so this is when I think about it as being actually like a little grain. This is like the outside bit that you see that looks makes it look more like a, a sort of like it's, it's all the bits that make it look like a seed rather than the sort of the white bit stuck in the middle. Right. Yes, exactly. And that's again, that's where the nutrients are hanging out. It's, in that, it's not just fiber there. It's it's the 
uh, fiber plus all these minerals and vitamins. And that, and then the germ is also removed. And the germ is a little part of the seed where the embryonic plant resides. And it's amazing that that, can, that embryonic plant can be there for years. And then you provide the right moisture and temperature and it sprouts. It's alive during that time. And the reason that it's alive is that, and it can persist, is it's packed in fat. Uh, uh, and, uh, and because that fat can be damaged with uh, time and uh, bad conditions, it's got lots of antioxidants there. So it's a little sealed off package uh, that uh, seals out oxygen and then has lots of uh, antioxidants in there. Uh, and so the food industry rips off the brand, uh, rips out the uh, germ, and that takes away roughly two-thirds of most of the minerals and vitamins uh, that are originally there in that, uh, that, that grain, that intact grain. Now, what does it do with those, that brand and that germ? Uh, the food industry knows that that's very valuable in terms of nutrients. So we feed that to animals and they go big and strong. So hang on, I just want to make sure I've got this. They, they take the grain that they're growing, they strip out yeah. all the really good bits, including your things that you say that give us all the nutrients. They give us sort of the leftovers and they feed the good bits to the animals. Exactly, yeah. That doesn't make a double sound like it's a great idea. <laughs> it is not a great idea, but that's that uh, a big chunk of that 80% of carbohydrates that are unhealthy, much more than sugar. But then it gets worse. Uh, then it takes that what's left, uh, that what we call the endosperm. That's uh, and it's uh, mostly almost all starch uh, with, that's depleted in minerals and vitamins. And then it grinds that into fine particles if you're making flour. And those fine particles uh, create much more surface area. So uh, when we uh, eat that as a bread or something made, uh, uh, dozens and dozens of other products made out of white flour, uh, that starch uh, hits our stomach and our digestive enzymes uh, uh, can very readily break that starch into glucose. What is starch? It's basically a chain of glucose molecules. And glucose is the form of sugar that we absorb, and that's blood sugar that we measure. So you get this very rapid increase in blood sugar after consuming white bread uh, and potatoes, uh, cooked potatoes. If you ate raw potatoes, just fine, but uh, they're disgusting, actually, if you want to try them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but just to make sure I've got this, basically, they take this thing that's a bit more like a seed, the whole grain, they rip out like almost all the bits that have all of the goodness. And then they end up with this thing that you're, you're calling is, is mainly this, this starch and the way to understand it. Then they smash it up into pieces so that when we eat a starch, basically our body turns that into blood sugar almost immediately. Exactly. And that's not good for us uh, because we get a big spike in blood glucose that demands a big surge of insulin uh, uh, that our pancreas pumps out and that insulin does drop the blood sugar down uh, quickly, but then in fact it overshoots much of the time. And so we're often hungry after an hour or two after that. Uh, and in contrast, if we eat the whole grain, uh, it takes a while. It's like a little time release capsule of starch. Uh, that brand protects the uh, starch from immediate uh, digestion and we uh, digest it, which di digestion essentially means breaking that starch down into glucose. And we get a, a much slower increase and lower increase in blood glucose levels. And we, uh, we don't get hungry right away. It's satisfying for a longer period of time. And uh, it's not surprising in the paper we just published, there was quite a substantial difference in weight gain over time. Uh, between people who ate the refined starches and people who ate them as whole grains.